Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like I had this my pit in my stomach and I was like, oh, I don't I don't know, I don't know what's gonna happen. I like couldn't watch the last few girls because it's really never over till it's over. Like any one of them can throw it in there. Um, but then finally once the last race was down, I was like, okay, I'm safe, I'm 30 in. And then I was like, okay. Time to go again. <laughs> so it, it must be nice to start first on that second run and have a clean run and just let them rip. It was amazing. It was like whole new world. <laughs> I loved it. <laughs> Congratulations. We're going to open it up to some questions. Peggy Shin. Hey, Michaela. Hey, Peggy. Hey, Peggy. Hey, Peggy. Hey, Peggy. Hey, Peggy. Sorry, I'm not used to mics. <laughs> um, so you were sitting in the hot seat after the race and you said you were you know, happiest about the other the Amer three Americans in the top 30. Can you talk more about that? Did you guys know each other for, I think you were two years apart? Before? Yeah, we overlapped a bit, and I was always gone in the winter, but we definitely overlapped with Nina and with her sister. Um, no, it's it's been a while since we've had, like, a really strong throwing, and um, I don't know, I mean, Nina, I watched her first run today, and I was like, that's the kind of fight that I'm going to have to have in the second run. It was so awesome, um, and we've been training together, and, like, I see these flashes of like absolutely brilliant skiing and I saw some of that today and like I know that she has even a bunch of levels above that so keep your eyes up. <laughs> but in like Paula I've trained with her a bunch and you know we race together so I we have some really really strong racers and it's just I don't know it's it's really cool to have this kind of showing of Americans in the second run and in the on the final board. Hi, Michaela. Nine Packer from Off Public Radio. This is your third Killington Slalom win. The crowd really wanted it. <laughs> does, does, does that add pressure to you? I mean, did you feel more pressure, or was this just another race? Or describe the whole fact that this is three in a row here. It, it didn't add pressure, but it's not just another race. I mean, it's a really special race. It's amazing to bring the World Cup back to the East Coast. Um, and to have this kind of showing, I mean, everybody's always so impressed when we come here and the crowd is just huge and they're screaming and cheering for everyone. And like yesterday, yesterday I had record breaking numbers of fans coming and watching and today, even in the rain and the like wintry mixed weather, they were all still out there. And um, that's, that's a really, really special thing and it doesn't feel like pressure. It just feels, I mean, yesterday I didn't get a podium and it could have easily been disappointing for everybody, but they were still like, that was amazing, this is such a cool, so I was like, yeah, just, who cares, doesn't matter if I don't win, they're just here for the show. <laughs> Michaela, um, the children I'm interested in today and um, all of the attention um, on not only you, but all the other athletes that are here, um, I'm sure that you've inspired them in many, many ways. Do you have any like stories or anecdotes about the kids that you've met and how um, you may have made it very important um, it, um, improvement in their efforts to try to make it to where you guys are. Yeah, well, it's it's really cool to see how many young kids out there like are ski racers and they love the sport and they're, you know, even just today, people saying like, I want to ski like you or, you know, you're my biggest idol. And I mean, it was like three years ago that I was saying that to Marley Shields. So I, I, it's, it's kind of a strange position to be in, to, to feel that. But at the same time, like there's such a cool connection that you can make as an athlete with these young athletes and um, young kids who aspire to do something great in their sport. And um, it's, it's also just amazing to try to see, see if I or we can inspire the next generation to kind of carry the torch on because um, that's it's an amazing sport and to share that passion with the world and with these young young kids is so cool. Miguel, uh, Theodore from uh, Radio uh, Radio Toten, the biggest radio channel in Norway. The crowd here in uh, in Kilton is amazing, totally crazy, and you are the biggest rock star of them all. <laughs> uh, what goes through your mind? What do you say to yourself uh, after the first run? and before the second round, so you can handle the pressure and once again deliver the way you do. Because I think that's a um, uh, magic recipe the older girls want to have. Uh, thank you. Now, I, after the first one, I watched my video and uh, just made a plan of what I thought that I could be better and I knew it was going to be a fight because the conditions were tough. And 
um, then I tried to forget about everything else and just focus on my turns and my skiing. And uh, that's, that's the only thing that seems to work for me. So um, I wasn't thinking about anything else. Hey, Michaela, two completely different course sets from the first round to the second round. The course report from the first one we heard, they said it was interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Does that sum it up? Yeah. No, I mean, it was an exciting course set. Um, it was tricky, especially with the conditions. There wasn't a lot to push on with your skis, so the snow just kind of, like, sucked you down the hill. And um, it, there wasn't a lot of rhythm in the first course, but it had some really interesting, like, fun pieces to it. And those are the kind of courses that, like, I don't know, I think it, we get glimpses of that on the women's side. It's, it's not a simple course, there's com complexity to it. It's, you have to use your brain, but you, you also have to fight and put it down the hill. And, uh, those can be really challenging corsets, but it also is such a great feeling when you get to the bottom and you're like, oh man, I just ripped that, you know? And, um, and also fighting for it and just trying to put your, your best skiing into that, it's, it's not always the easiest thing, but it's really satisfying when you do it. Adam Kaufman from Ice Coast Magazine. Uh, Michaela, you grew up skiing up here in the Northeast, went to Burke Mountain Academy. How did that impact your performance in the mixed conditions that you faced this weekend at Killington? And as a follow-up, do you find that there's a difference between Eastern and Western racers? Yeah, well, I think just spending quite a lot of time in the East Coast and racing here, you get used to having a lot of different conditions in the span of like two hours, let alone an entire day in a race. And you just, like waking up this morning, I knew that it was going to be uh, some nasty weather, some pretty nice weather. It could be warm, then it might get cold, and uh, anything could happen. And it, you know, the first run there was like fog clouds rolling in for some racers, and in the middle of the course, it was like, I can't see a thing. <laughs> and you just kind of expect expect that you sort of expect the unexpected and um having spent some time here i was able to do that and that was i uh, maybe an advantage or at least i felt comfortable i think he probably felt a similar thing because he's right nina i mean <laughs> <laughs> yeah it didn't feel great the first round but <laughs> But yeah, being on the East Coast, you practice in that, and then you learn to accept it, and learn to like it, and it's not all, like all sunshine and rainbows, and you're just like, eh, I'm gonna throw it out anyway. <laughs> Nina, when you came down on that first run, I was uh, talking to Megan, and I said, I don't think the top judge gave you a very good score on your airs because it looked like a mobile course. <laughs> By the time you came down, how challenging was that to fight for it, fight, fight, fight on that first run? I was really just hanging on at the end there. <laughs> um, it was tough. It was not easy. There were um, some grooves, and like Michaela was saying, the fog was in and out, which made it hard to see the ruts in the snow. Um, but I think the biggest thing, like you said, is you just got to keep fighting. Like sometimes it's easy to think, oh, this doesn't feel good, this isn't fast. Um, but just keep going and send it, and then yeah, worked out for me. Keep it working. <laughs> yeah. Um, Michaela and Nina, Lisa Lynn from Vermont Ski and Ride Magazine. Was there any single piece of advice or any one thing that you learned while you were at Burke that has stayed with you? Uh, yeah. So, <laughs> this is me, my left. <laughs> so, my coach at Burke, Kirk, uh, was always, he's maybe not quite obsessive, but it was definitely his, like, first and foremost pride and joy. It was a forward double pole plant. And um, on days, especially like today, when it's rattly and a lot of things are, different things are going on, that was always something that I just like ingrained in my bones to recenter my position and keep me on the course. And just like randomly throwing in some double pole plants in there and trying to get back on the front of my skis. But really, I mean, it was like, like a broken record in my head. I don't know if he was always like this with you too, but he was like, well, you didn't quite get your forward double pole plant that run, and I'm like, oh, Kirk, oh, how was the rest of my skiing? So that was, that was a, probably a really good piece of advice, but coaching. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if there's one thing, but I would just say maybe 
like the whole attitude that Burr cultivates. It's definitely pretty hardcore, and they like to be outside, and if it's rainy and gross, we like it even more. <laughs> um, and so I'd say just like sort of toughing it out, but also enjoying that kind of grind um, with like good, you know, people surrounding you, everyone's working hard and enjoying it. Um, and so I'd say that attitude is sort of separate. Excellent, ladies. Any other questions? A couple more. Michaela, congratulations on your 45th. Oh, thank you. You have a habit of making the outstanding routine, oh, and, and we love it. Oh, <laughs> you do. That's really the nice. expectations are enormous, you need to deliver. That's fantastic. Well, my expectations are higher. So. <laughs> <laughs> and Nina, congratulations. You don't break in the top 30. I hope it's the first of many more. Thank you. Uh, Michaela, you are, I think, without doubt, the most dominant female skier of your generation. And I think there is a gentleman on the male side, I saw her shirts, doing the same thing right now. Yeah. You were both in Levy last week. Have you ever met him? Have you ever spoken to him about ski racing? I mean, is there a relationship there? And someday in the future, with the time I have left, might I see a Schifrin, Hersher, uh, Charity Slalom, like a Billie Jean King, Bobby Reeves kind of thing. <laughs> that would be fabulous, right? Am I right? That would be exciting, right? <laughs> You're awesome. <laughs> Thank you for that endless bout of compliments. Um, and I have met Marcel, uh, especially since we're on the same equipment brand. We meet every year in the fall before the season starts for the Atomic Media Day. Um, and he's always been like, really kind and, and um, uh, su supportive, I guess you could say supportive. Just just really, I admire his, obviously his style of skiing, but I also admire just the way that he gets to the start gate and every single race he's ready to go. Like I don't even think I'm on the same stratosphere as him. Um, but it's just incredible, this the attitude that he has, that he just, he knows how to win even like more than anybody I have ever seen. And, um, in GS and Psalm and whatever he races, and that's that's something that really inspires me and definitely motivates me to try to uh, not not match his level, but you know to try to raise my own level and you know get to that point where I can get in the start gate and just be like, no doubt I'm ready to go, you know. And about <laughs> about the <laughs> match of the ages. <laughs> uh, there hasn't been any talk about that. I suppose we'd have to do some counseling kind of scenes to figure out uh, how that might go down. But uh, I have thought about some fun, cool, different ideas for ski racing, kind of fundraising or something like that, based off the Labor Cup, actually. But I'm, I'm not really sure how it would work. And I think it's something that needs some time to figure out. But it would be, I think it would be cool, something like that. We have time for one more question. Anyone? Megan? Are you going to Lake Louise? Yes. Are you doing all the races? Do you know yet? That is the plan. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, good luck. Hey, uh, Nina, on behalf of the local organizing committee, we want to commemorate your third try here at Killington and your first World Cup. <laughs> and on behalf of my wife, who's the volunteer coordinator here, we want to thank you because I understand you were donating a couple pair of headphones. Yeah, so I have these two signature pair of uh, over-the-ear noise-canceling headphones, and I wanted to, do, well, donate them to an auction between all the volunteers who work in this race. Um, I'm not exactly sure how we're going to do it yet, I'm on social media or something, but anyway, two volunteers who worked their bums off in this race are going to have a nice little prize with them. So thank you to the volunteers. It was an amazing weekend. Thank you again for making that race possible and so amazing, even in tough conditions. Thank you. Thank you very much for doing that. Thank you for doing that. Thank you for doing that.